How about this, Eli? Last year, I say this, you know, asking you if that was the best football team and collection of talent he's ever had, it's so hard when you're trying to pick your favorite chocolate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I probably think, would you agree, though, that this was probably his greatest journey to a national championship because yeah. of the pandemic and everything that was involved with it? Players yeah. opting out, potentially. Players being injured. Waddle getting hurt early. All of that. I mean, you're, you, was this the best journey he's had since he's I been there in Birmingham? I don't think there's any question about that. Putting it the way you did, uh, there's no question about that. It was, you know, be, with the COVID, with all of that. But notice there were no opt-outs, you know, here at Alabama. These kids bought in. They wanted to be part of the program. It was going to be an all-SEC schedule. It was, you know, it was – but, yes, there was no question that he – now, a few years ago when he went – we had to go like five deep in the linebacker depth chart. You know, that was outstanding. You know, this guy gets hurt, all right, you bring the next guy. This guy gets hurt, you bring the next guy. This guy gets hurt, you bring – I mean, I was the only guy who didn't play linebacker, I think. <laughs> and, uh, and, and still we go on and, and win uh, a title. Um, so there have been some great ones. But you're, I'm glad you didn't ask me to compare teams or players because, you know, how do you compare uh, Jalen Waddell? How do you compare Devontae Smith to, you know, Julio Jones? Uh, and, and and many others of that ilk. You know, how do you compare the running backs and so on? It's, you know, once you get to that level of talent, it's, you know, you're splitting hairs. But yes, dealing with everything they dealt with and the way the kids bought in and the coach missing the uh, Iron Bowl because of COVID and this, that, and the other. Uh, yeah, it was it was probably his his best journey, as you put it. Merrill Reese was on with us the other day, the legendary voice of the Eagles, been calling sure. Eagle games for 50 years. Exactly. He said he's never seen, and I know it's like mini camps, it's OTAs. He's never seen a more electric player in his time calling Eagle games or being around camps than Devontae Smith. Give me your synopsis of what you saw with him as an Alabama Crimson Tide player and why you think he'll make it in the NFL. Well, I don't think there's a question. He'll make it in any league he wants to play in. He works hard. Uh, he's got a set of hands, man. It doesn't – I mean, it's it's just remarkable. I asked Nick Saban one day because he had made uh, – Devontae had made a couple of magnificent catches in some ball game. And I do – I host the Coach Nick Saban radio show every Thursday night. So the following Thursday, after Devontae made one of those spectacular catches – I said to the coach on the air, I said, hey, tell me. I said, you know, when he makes these kind of grabs, I said, we're up in the booth and, you know, we're just shaking our heads in amazement as I'm as we're calling the play. I said, do you ever stand there on the sidelines and just shake your head during a game amazed at what you see? And he said, I don't have to wait for game day for that to happen. He goes, he does a whole lot of that stuff during the practices. So uh, it's the guy just has one. of He's one of those great talents. Uh, he runs well. He has outstanding speed. Uh, the fact that he's not the biggest guy in America. Well, I don't think that matters. Uh, you know, we've seen some of the best defensive backs in the country try to stop him. Uh, they've not been able to. He competed every day in practice against arguably one of the best defenses in the country. They couldn't stop him on the practice field. So, and I, I'm interested to see how well he and Jalen Hurts, uh, assuming Jalen is the quarterback, and I'm not. That's not my job to to make that call. But uh, assuming Jalen's the quarterback, it's just going to be remarkable. Uh, to watch that Bama combination get rekindled if the, if it does. Tell me what you – two last questions for you here, Eli. Um, tell me what you, in your opinion, is of Jalen Hurts because, you know, if you talk to one person, they would say this, you know, he's got a lot of work to do. And if you talk to some, some other people, you would say this, this kid's got a great chance. I, I, I look at him like this. 
Boy, he was a great teammate in Alabama. He won a lot there. Mm -hmm. Then he went to Oklahoma, learned a brand new system. The players loved him there. He shows up to Philly. Everyone in the locker room loves him. There just seems to be something like a Dak Prescott aura about the kid yep. that people gravitate to him. Do you get that same sense? Oh, there's no question. He was always like that. The nicest young man you'd want to see. Of course, let's not forget, he grew up with a coach. You know, his dad was a coach. And that's a big factor. That really, you know, you're immersed in, in football. Uh, and I'm sure he's got stuff to improve on. Everybody does. Heck, I'm sure Tom Brady would tell you he could do something better than, you know, than he's doing right now, whatever it might be. But, uh, yeah, I don't see why he wouldn't do well. He runs well. He can make things happen out of nothing. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him get a, a bona fide chance in the National Football League. And when the guys like you, when you're beloved in the locker room, you know, man, you've been there and done that. Uh, they'll play as hard, if not harder, than they knew they could uh, just to support him. So uh, I, I'm looking forward. He, to me, he's a, he's a huge asset for the Eagles, as they say. He's a huge <laughs> asset. Finally here, uh, Mac Jones. 